So, Liberty Media is now the official owner of uh, MotoGP. Is this good? Is this bad? Let's find out. My name is Daniel and welcome back to the LTM channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe. Uh, we also got podcasts uh, with V8 Supercars, Formula One and other motorsport events. Uh, so if you want to check that out on our channel, it is available there. It also is available on Spotify. If you want to check it out, be sure to give us a five star rating. It helps get us helps us get out there more. Uh, also, we've got a merch store. If you want to check that out, the link is in the description below. And last but not least, a shout out to our TikTok subscribers here. Now, with that being said, let's get straight into the topic of the day, which is Liberty Media uh, has, has bought the rights to MotoGP uh, for a whopping 4.2 billion euro or $4.5 billion roughly, uh, which is insane. And uh, they picked a horrible day for it to announce it, uh, which is April Fool's Day. So there should be a rule, just a quick disclaimer, there should be a rule to say, don't announce things on April Fool's Day that are real. A lot of people tend to fall for it. Uh, and tend to, a lot of people tend to think it's fake. Um, so <laughs> it's no joke, uh, you're hearing it, from he hearing it here first, it's no joke. This is a real thing. Liberty Media has officially bought MotoGP. So let's have a look at the facts before we get into the opinion side of things. So uh, like I said, they've sold for uh, 4.2 billion euro with an equity value of 3.5 billion. Uh, Liberty Media is gonna be roughly owning 86% of Dorna Sports, which currently own MotoGP, and Dorna will retain the 14% of the company. Um, and in terms of Dorna Sports itself, which is obviously the current owners of MotoGP, like I said, uh, Caramello, uh, who is the CEO, will uh, remain in that position uh, during this partnership, and also Dorna Sports will remain in Madrid. Um, so nothing changes uh, over there. Now, of course, Dorna Sports owns the rights to not only MotoGP, but Moto2, Moto3, as well as the FIM Superbike Championship, uh, the Moto E Championship, and also the new Women's uh, Racing World Championship as well. Um, so all of that, I assume, will be under the umbrella uh, of Liberty Media. Now, and last but not least, this will take effect at the end of the year, at the end of 2024. Um, so let's get straight into the opinion pieces. Um, now to quick disclaimer, I'm not a huge MotoGP fan. I don't watch it as much as I want to. Uh, I see bits and pieces here and there. Uh, I'm more of an F1 fan than a MotoGP fan. So just telling you that now, just so I know, so you know where I'm coming from and you know where my mindset is. Now, with that being said, what do I think of this? I think it's a, it's a brilliant opportunity, uh, to grow the sport. Um, obviously it has received a lot of great, uh, comments regarding it and a lot of hate comments. Uh, of course, we'll be diving into that as well. But overall, it's 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 what MotoGP needs. Uh, obviously, the formula of MotoGP right now is fantastic. I hope that remains unchanged for the forthcoming future. However, in terms of production and stuff like that and hype up, um, I hope that uh, Liberty Media can you know, boost it in a way. Of course, uh, they've owned Formula One since 2017 and we've seen the massive jump in revenue and audience numbers and stuff since that moment. Um, now, yeah, yeah, it's great and bad. A lot of people are complaining about Drive to Survive fans and stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is, if, in terms of a business, this is, they've done an incredible job. It's brought new fans in, um, drive to, especially with Drive to Survive, uh, with the drivers now being more celebrities, it has brought a massive chunk uh, of new audience. It has brought that in, um, and they are now interested in Formula One, which, and Australian Grand Prix had a whopping, almost just under uh, 500,000 people. Uh, it was a sold out event. And obviously Silverstone last year, we saw over 500,000 people there as well. So, and that has a lot to do with the drive to survive side of things. And Liberty Media has done a sensational job with that. And also with Formula One as well, their production value of the weekend as well with the, in the new intro, the theme song and all that stuff. It's incredible. And I hope to see that in MotoGP. Um, 
sort of thing. Like, imagine we get like a ride to survive for MotoGP. Yes, you know, it's going to receive a lot of hate, a lot of greatness, just like Formula One, but it's going to create a brand new audience. Someone who hasn't maybe seen MotoGP will see that series similar to F1 and they will love it. And if they love it, they'll love the sport and then they'll be instantly hooked. It's that That's, you know, that's where I can see it going. And Liberty Media has done a fantastic job at doing that for Formula One. Um, now, of course, you know, the fan base for Formula One can be a bit up and down, <laughs> I should say, uh, especially with the drive to survive. Uh, so a lot of old, well, f fans that have been watching the sport since a child, um, they're not a fan of the drive to survive fans. But that, it, the thing is with fan bases, no matter where you are, there's always going to be good and bad fan bases. I've experienced it with V8 supercars. Um, there's always going to be good and bad, no matter what no matter what they do. So it's just a thing. But in terms of the future of MotoGP, uh, this is a great thing to grow and keep the sport alive and going. Uh, and basically, I, I don't want them to change the formula of the sport, like I said. I just want them to branch it out more so more people can witness it, you know? Um, and I do understand the hate as well because obviously with Formula One, we have seen changes made in terms of the formula of it like for example we've got about three or four well we've got um, three uh us events uh, in formula one which is insane and Mo moto gp um you know hopefully it doesn't become americanized like like formula one has um like people do say um because that's what makes moto gp unique uh, as well uh, it's a worldwide sport feels like it Hopefully, you know, we don't see three events in US like we do here in Formula One. Uh, also, in that matter as well, um, there has been talks, and I think there is going to happen, at least Qatar this year, is MotoGP will be racing alongside Formula One. And I saw this Twitter by Chad Nalon. He made a good point. Um, I don't know if I'll have it on the screen here or not, but he was th saying, if, you know, if there's a doubleheader weekend for Formula One and MotoGP, how is it going to look? Um, obviously, you know, if... You, I've, I've also said an opinion piece on that. Um, basically, you know, for example, if there's a MotoGP weekend on the same weekend as F1, like Qatar, I think this year, uh, how's it going to look? Well, this is my prediction, and this is what I think should happen. Um, they definitely should not have two... Uh, they shouldn't have the main MotoGP and Formula 1 race on the Sunday. I feel like they should separate it, because if they do that... Um, I feel like MotoGP is going to feel like a support category, which they're not. They're, they're, they're their own can of beans. They're their own unique thing. Um, and I don't want to belittle them. Um, and I, I'm actually afraid of that if they do join Formula One, if they do get belittled, like supercars when they come uh, to Melbourne, for example. I don't. Now, obviously, supercars, that's a whole different thing. But I don't want MotoGP to feel like supercars being a support category for Formula 1, because that's not what it is. Um, it shouldn't be like that anyway. So in my opinion, I think separate the days. So I think if possible, uh, the MotoGP sprint can either be the Friday. Uh, yes, it's going to be, you know, tight with time and stuff. But if they do it on the Friday, maybe Saturday morning or something like that, and have the main MotoGP race on the Saturday, and then just ded dedicate Sunday to Formula 1, I think that will work a lot better, because obviously, um, with MotoGP and Formula 1 being together, it's going to create a even larger audience, and some might be only there for MotoGP, some might be only there for Formula 1. And if they're both racing on the Sunday, you don't want to overpopulate uh, to the point where, you know, you can't, you know, tickets are sold out uh, and fans just can't watch it properly. And for those who want to go there for MotoGP, can't go because everyone's there for Formula 1, if that makes sense. Now, obviously, that's fantastic for circuit revenue and business and all that stuff. But in terms of the fan viewing, uh, if you're just there for MotoGP and you can't get in because of Formula 1, then... Um, it's a bit disappointing. So that's why I'm ho that's why they should stick MotoGP to roughly just Saturday only if they do that. This is just for the events for Formula 1 and MotoGP combined. And I'm hoping that um you know this doesn't happen all weekend every weekend. Now obviously a lot of Formula 1 circuits don't suit MotoGP at all. Um but for example Qatar, you know, that works well for MotoGP. It is of course a MotoGP track originally. Um so tracks like that work fine. 
but a lot of street circuits and stuff like that, you know, just don't work. So um, hopefully, you know, they don't, you know, cross over a lot. But I'm, I'm very eager to see what the future holds for the for the sport, at least. Um, I understand, like I said, I understand the positive and negative comments. And I'll oh, actually, in saying that, comment below uh, your opinion on it. If it's a great move uh, and it's a great decision uh, that MotoGP is being bought out by Liberty Media. Um, because I would love to know your thoughts about this topic. Obviously, it's a big topic that's going on at the moment. Um, so I'm eager to know your thoughts. But personally, for me... I reckon uh, I can see both sides of the story. Uh, I see, hopefully, you know, it helps, you know, make it even bigger than it is while keeping the same formula. I don't want them to mess with what it is now. That I just want them to promote it a lot better. Um, so we'll see what happens with the future. See what the future holds. Of course, you know, nothing's going to happen till the end of the year, until next season. Um, so very little is, you know, is known for now. Uh, but time will tell as we go on. So. Uh, yeah, like I said, let me know what you think. This is just a short opinion piece. Um, like I said, if you do actually end up enjoying this video, feel free to subscribe and like as well. See how many likes we can get. Uh, and also check out our Spotify and YouTube for our podcasts. Uh, we also do live stream podcasts too on YouTube and TikTok. So keep an eye out, keep an eye out for that as well if uh, that seems like something you're interested in. And uh, yeah, so I'm curious to see what you guys think about this whole uh, deal. Um, I'm excited to see how it folds out, uh, how it turns out. Um, of course, you know, we just got to wait for now. Um, but I'm curious to see how we go. Hopefully they don't ruin the sport, but uh, I'm excited for the future for it. So, yep, yeah, that's all from me. Bye for now.